Hey guys, my name is Nikomenko with Nikomenko Photography and today we're gonna talk about the 4 most asked questions how to create filter through Photoshop. So, how I'm actually gonna create my own filter and save it for my own use for later. So let's go to our Photoshop and uh, what I'm gonna show you here, this is just an image I picked for this video tutorial. This is a lovely couple of picture. What I wanna actually show you like in this image, we can see a lot of colors, but before we start all the tutorial, uh, I wanna show you this cool trick, how to save it on your library, because we can adjust the perfect filter and we wanna use it later. And then you're like, mm, I forgot what settings I use. So this time we can save all the settings in one action. So we're gonna show you how to create action before we start doing and create our filters. And I think it's very, very important and makes our life much more easier. So let's go here and we have action button right here in the play button. If you don't find it, you can just go to windows and you can find actions right here. It's very, very simple. Just push it, it's gonna be on your screen. Now, before we start do, you see we have so much stuff here. We don't really need it. We're just gonna create new ones. Let's say just for this video, let's create filter one. And here we're gonna say like new layer, let's say, Again, filter, just for example. And what happened, you see the red button right here? It started recording, like a video recording, pretty much. So everything we're gonna do now is gonna record all our actions, okay? And in the end of the video, this is how I'm gonna show you how it actually saves and then we can use it later. So the question is how I'm gonna incorporate my colors using Adobe Photoshop. And I'm gonna show you a very simple, quick ways how you can do it. So if you're already familiar with Photoshop, if you go here on down on your right, you can see we have curves and we have levels. I prefer use them both. Let's start with the curves. Now, let's talk about the RGB. Everybody know RGB. We have the red, we have the green, we have the blue color. What I like to do, I put colors through playing with the RGB and I'm gonna show you how to do it. Let's put for example red filter. Now if I just do this you can see like my image has red color but this is not what we're looking for. What we actually want to to find some colors that be or maybe on the highlight color like the lights or we want on the shadows like the shadow be specific colors. I definitely recommend more play with the shadows and to start with the shadows it just makes really easy to make the filter. So let's say if I go down, you can see the shadows on the picture become much more color, more teal color. So yeah, by moving this settings, we get more teal. If you go a little bit more up, you get more red color. And let's say you like, I like the teal color. I think it looks very cool, create very vintage effect. And uh, what next I wanna do, let's play with the green color. Let's put a dot in the center because when we do the dots, it's for example, if I put a dot here and I play with that, you can see like it doesn't change too much of the highlights and we wanna actually more focus on the shadows. So what you can do, you can get another dot here and move it back to the center where it actually was before and then we're just gonna play more with the shadows. And I think if you play with the shadows, you can get a very, very nice cool effect filter. Now you see that green color, like if you go a little bit up, it will be much more green. If you go a little bit down, it become a little bit more purplish. So in RGB, you have the negative and the positive colors that actually create the balance between them. So if you pick green, the breaking color is gonna be purple. Next, let's go, for example, bluish. Now we have blue, right? And we have yellow. So the breaking color for blue is gonna be yellow. And this is what we're trying to do. We're gonna create the same thing like we did before, a little bit that, and we're just gonna play a little bit more and you create like this nice vintage bluish effect as well. Whatever you think guys, it's up to you. I will just wanna give you some cool ideas and features how you can create some colors to your Photoshop. Next thing I like to use levels, it's very really quick. Let's just not use this course layers before. Let's move to the level. So levels, it's pretty much similar to curves. It works a little bit differently. We have the RGB as well. So we have your pretty much similar what we used before on the curves. We can go to the red color. And from here, we can do the same thing starting from the shadows. And if you go from the here from the right side, it's half the highlights. Now you can see the highlights to start already from, from red. 
you can go down below here and change the highlights to green if you want to move it to green a little bit different like how we use it on the curves it's up to you whatever feel better i usually prefer use curves i feel i have more flexibility but sometimes i like to put a little bit more contrastity using levels uh, let's do pretty much similar like we did before let's say i want to put a little bit shadows it'll be a little bit yellowish i say i don't like the yellowish let's put a little bit bluish let's see whatever looks better for our pictures and we like to play a lot with the pictures another trick i do i like to show you how to create maybe a, a mod effect using uh, adobe photoshop and you don't have to use just colors to make it let's same way i can show you let's say uh, ways let's do curves let's put a dot in the center and this is very cool actually learn that matter of fact always add something vintage to your pictures so let's just put a dot before we get to the darkness area in our curves and only that specifically that let's say i move it up you're gonna see we start getting that matter effect and that's what we want to get we want to get that matter effect using adobe so this is very very cool let's say you want a little bit more you can just move it here that that you can just play around with it but if i do the opposite direction i uh, will see just doing weird stuff but i don't think that's what we want but this is a very cool thing and then you can do pretty much the same thing in all the colors and gb let's say i don't want to look like like white matte let's say i want to be like a little bit more teal so let's do the same thing like we did before a little bit that here notice i put a lot of that for a reason because of one controlling that's my paragraph doesn't go above too much and so we want to just control special areas okay we're just going to go a little bit more up okay and you can see the shadows on the picture start to get a little bit more redder and that's what we actually want to get especially on the picture i think it's very 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 cool this is how we create our colors on using adobe photoshop okay so what we actually want to show you remember i will show you in the first time um, before we start doing this video the action uh, action key so let's go back to our action key and stop the recording button so what you're gonna see right now here it actually record everything we just did right now doing this filter to create that filter and i want to show you something very 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 cool let's say i take different image you see that image this image never been in touch brand new i just open it so let's go back to our action key right here press the filter and press the play button and look what's just happened it just basically did everything we did right now and just threw to the image absolutely the same curves levels everything we just did right now and play before and how cool is that now actually we don't have to memorize all the filters sometimes we have the perfect filter and we want to save it and that's what actually help you a lot in the future not work so hard and work so smart and the way you we call the filters you can call them the way you want them but the way you actually adjust the filter and i think that's very very cool so next questions what is the importance of the white balance using it on a photo so i want to create a filter and when we create in filters sometimes the picture you took it's the white balance was taken like say this image that we have right now here the picture was taken i say about 5000 kelvin and that's pretty warm colors we have here so what is white balance so maybe maybe some of you don't know we can go here and we have white balance let's show you where is our white balance color balance there you go so on co what color balance you can see we have the blue to yellow like i showed you the negative part to the positive part uh, green to magenta and cyan to red uh, i actually call it teal but you can call it cyan so what i'm trying to show let's see if we're going to put cyan a little bit they will make the colors a little bit more colder while we're trying to show the white color balance what color balance means it's like the expression of the image if it's the picture is cold or the picture is warmer okay like if i take a picture of iceberg too in the snow so definitely it's going to be bluish color because it presents cold 
but if you take a picture with going a yellow iceberg it will look weird it will look like it took for mars so what i actually want to show you here specifically on the white balance that you can actually just put warmer colors or you can play more with uh, cold colors so bluish is going to be more colder and reddish is going to be much more warmer color so let's say i took the shot we want to work on this image what white balance i actually should pick for my filter let's say let's do what we did before the recording filter let's put the filters we got before and i want to put my white balance so what white balance has put it on the top so you can work on everything so the picture looks very very nice but let's say i think this picture is too much warm so from here we have the blue that will make it look like much more colder so i just gonna go a little bit more with the blue and you can start seeing it the pictures start getting very cold you create that very cold effect and that's actually like let's see before and let's see how it looks after and you can see how make the difference it actually did to make the picture feels colder and imagine you took that picture in the winter time it will definitely feel that nice effect that's what you want you want to feel it cold you don't want to feel it like too much warm in the snow it will, i think it will look weird you know it's like like those fake movies what we see so what i'm trying to tell you about the white balance it was really important when we creating our filters sometimes the picture the original picture was taken it can be on different colorization so we want to give the right color it can be a warmer color so it can be colder colors i think that will answer that question okay so the final four question how are we going to improve our lighting and shading when we have a darker picture or we have a lighter picture and that's actually very very simple and i'm going to show you let's go back to our photoshop so let's go remove everything we did before now and let's do just a brand new uh, effect so let's say this picture what we have here i think it's too bright and if you don't sure about it you have the histogram that's already show you you have the warming sign sometimes it helps you but another way you can go to the channels and just play with rgb and do it like on the black and white on the black and white it's very very noticeable which areas is the most brighter when you have a lot of light which areas is too darker so i can see how dress here specifically it's too bright and i want to fix that part so how are we going to fix it let's go bring our rgb back back to the layers and remember our best friend curves we go back to curves now what we're going to do we're going to push the center of the curves now we want to play with the brightness remember the brightness is the top level of the curves so we're going to put our dab here and this time we're going to go down a little bit with the lightness and look what happened we start to see those details on the dress so it's actually not too bright like it was before now we can actually fix a bit but what see what happened i can start see a little bit here and i think it's kind of we got too much to the age i just go a little bit more up but you know what actually i have an idea i can fix it much more let's go let's say we do the way i did it before and you say you don't really like it you can see in the course we already have the layer mask and if you know how to use the layer mask basically white on black let's put more flow and what we can do we can just basically erase those parts we don't want to so we can actually have it perfectly the way we want to as well i think this is perfect okay so i think you got in the point here and voila perfect so well you can see i'm trying to fix it i see his face a little bit here but just like i'm trying to do it quite quick as possible and just like for this video so you can just see let's make the brush much more bigger so we can just make it like you can see the floor we don't want the floor very very cool yeah we don't want the trees to like get affected very 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 nice very very nice okay there you go I think you guys got the idea how it looks. So let's see how it looks before, it looks after. You can see we can a little bit more fix in here a little bit. But we can always make it better. I'm just trying to teach you guys some cool stuff, how to make the picture much more perfectly looking brighter and we can play with the contrast on the picture. All right. so. Let's see what we learned today, guys. We actually learned how to create filters. 
we learn how to adjust and create colors building our filters. We learn how to make our filter perfect by having a perfect white balance to a picture and how we can fix a picture that actually was all much bright or all much dark. And I think that's very really important when you start doing your own filters when you do Photoshop. Thank you for tuning into my channel. I hope you guys learn a lot from this video tutorial. And if you're looking for more content, you can check the link below this video. And you can find my Instagram, my Facebook. And if you like very like what I teach today on this video tutorial, don't forget to subscribe. And you can get the new video updates every time. I hope you guys enjoy it. See you next time.